Hey class, it's Mr. Falstrom, and it is time for us to learn about fractions. Dun, dun, dun. Our learning goal is quite simple. It's been a while since we've done anything with fractions. As a matter of fact, you haven't done anything with fractions with me this year. So it'll be our first time. So we're just going to refresh our basic knowledge of fractions and we're just going to try and revisit some of the terms, uh, numerator, denominator, and whole. We're going to talk about what those mean. So we're not going to do anything too difficult today. It's all pretty much stuff that you should have uh, been taught in third and fourth grade with fractions. So listen up, students. It's time to get back to basics. It's review time. So here you can see the fraction one half. And let's just go over what the definition of a fraction is. A fraction is a number that represents parts of a whole or a collection. So that sounds great, but what does that actually mean? Well, let's just start here with what is a whole. When I say parts of a whole, what exactly is a whole? A whole is just one thing or one object or one collection. And for example, one whole pizza. It could be one whole granola bar. And you'll notice in math, especially in word problems, math books love to use food. And the reason why um, you'll see so many word problems with fractions that have food is because it's really easy to take a pizza and cut it into equal size pieces or to cut a granola bar into same size pieces, which when we're talking about fractions, we're taking something and we're dividing it up into equal parts. All the pieces are the same size. And so it makes sense to do that with food. It's something that we can look at and go, yeah, I, I can imagine a pizza being divided up, or I can imagine taking this granola bar and cutting it in half or whatever. Um, you don't really see, that's why you don't see word problems with stuff like basketballs, because that's not something in real life where you're going to cut a basketball in half or cut it into equal parts. It just doesn't seem to make sense. So usually when you'll see a problem with something that isn't something that you would normally cut into parts, you'll see it as part of a collection. So instead of using one basketball to represent a whole, I'm going to use, I'm going to talk about one collection of basketballs. I have a whole group of basketballs here, one group of basketballs. And this collection is made up of four basketballs. They're all the same size. So that's our equal parts. Each basketball is the same, um, same size, same, same, the pieces are the same. And if we want to talk about them as a group, we could say, hey, three fourths of the collection are Nivea basketballs because out of the four basketballs that make up the collection, three of them are Nivea. And that means that one fourth of the collection is Wilson basketballs because only one out of the four is a Wilson brand. So again, um, fractions represent parts of a whole or a collection. So let's come back to our example with one half. The top number in a fraction is a numerator. And the numerator, that number tells us how many parts there are, how many e equals, equal parts or same size parts there are. And the bottom number is called the denominator. And that tells us how many parts we need to make one whole. So here's an example of, um, here's a fraction. This is one half. It's being modeled with a, with a, with a bar model. Um, that rectangle has been split into two equal parts. 
and one of the two parts is shaded. So there's our numerator. That's that's how many parts we have shaded. One out of, one of them. How many total parts are there? Two. So that red rectangle represents one half of the whole rectangle. And if just to be silly, we'll try it with basketballs. So here's our half a basketball, right? If we could actually cut a basketball perfectly in half and somehow the air was still inside of it. Um, so the whole basketball has been split into two equal pieces. And right here we have one of the two pieces. So therefore right now we're looking at one half of the basketball, one out of the two total pieces that we would need to make a complete basketball. All right, it's quiz time. Which number in this fraction is the denominator? Which number is the numerator? And in this case, this fraction five, six, five is the numerator. That means we have five pieces. How many pieces would we need to make a whole? We would need six. That's our denominator. And here it is modeled for you. So there are six total pieces. Five out of the six are shaded. Five sixths of the whole is shaded. And here we are looking at a lovely Hershey bar, which is perfect for talking about fractions, if you look at this Hershey bar, the way that Hershey has designed these types of candy bars, the whole bar is already set up to where it's been divided into equal parts. Each piece is the same size, which makes it a perfect example of fractions. So my first question is pretty simple. It's just how many total pieces are there in the Hershey bar to, that make up the whole? How many total parts are there? And there are 12 total pieces, if you count them all up. And now I want you to pretend that you ate the Hershey bar or you shared some of it or whatever, and that's all you have left, um, the part that's surrounded in that kind of red rectangle. That's all you have left. I want you to tell me what fraction is that of the whole of the entire Hershey bar out of the 12 equal parts how many parts do you have can you write write that as a fraction for me and there are three equal pieces left which means if their original bar had 12 you have three twelfths of the Hershey bar left over if you only have three twelfths of the Hershey bar left over, then how much of the Hershey bar was already eaten or given away? Nine twelfths. Very good. And tell me, how many total pieces are there that make up this whole rectangle? Okay, now how many pieces are shaded? So what fraction correctly represents this model? And the correct answer is two-fifths. The rectangle has been broken into five equal parts, and two out of the parts are shaded, so two-fifths of the rectangle or of the whole, or whatever we want to call it. One more. How many total parts are there that make up this whole? And how many parts are shaded? And so what is what fraction represents this, this whole, this whole thing? What fraction would you write? And the correct answer would be five eighths. 
the whole has been divided into eight equal parts. We have five of those parts, so five eighths of the rectangle. Five eighths is being modeled here. So our learning goal was we were just going to refresh our basic knowledge of fractions. Hopefully you feel good on that. Hopefully you feel a little more comfortable remembering what a fraction is and what the numbers mean. You know what a numerator is, a denominator. And if you have any questions, just contact me and or ask me in class and I will help you. So way to go. You're a star. Thank you for participating, and I'll see you again on the next video.